Welcome to Dan ARG YouTube. Fares Okwere, they talk about the ban of CDA and Okaigele by the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki. If you hear waiting Okaigele, they do people will buy land for Edo State. For this video, it will shock you. Try and make you watch this video from beginning to the end. Enjoy the video. <laughs> okay, um, good evening, gentlemen. I would like to um, discuss something very important today. It's about the the ban on CDA and Okaigele, you know, or whatever it is called. You know, first of all, I want to commend His Excellency Governor Gordon Norega Obaseki <coughs> and the Edo State House of Assembly for the bold step to enact the new law or repair the, the, the existing law on the ban of CDA and all her activities. Uh, over the last few years in Edo, we've seen We've seen um, the activities, firsthand the activities of <coughs> of um, this group of people who call themselves Okaigele and whatever you call themselves, CDA, and um, the devastating effects it had in the property development sector of Edo State, and the ban on CDA brought some level of sanity, you know, brought some level of sanity until these um, uh, same group of people found another way to come back using what they call Okaigele or whatever it is called, you know, and they've been causing a whole lot of havoc, a whole lot, causing a whole lot of problems for people who are into property development and property development in general in the state. Property development uh, sector, you know. Okay. So I think, sorry, I think I'm back. The network was a bit, um, was a bit um, on the other side. But as I was saying, you know, uh, property development is a huge sector, you know. It's... Um, it's a it's a huge money spin now for the people and for the government also. And what we've seen in a do recently is a spate of of criminals criminals operating in the name of developing communities. And it's a shame. It's a shame. People who have no idea, who have no 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 um, training on proper on the um, town planning and development come out and start giving plans. all kind of titles from to uh, pointers to uh, surveyors these are people who are not even trained in those fields and what they do is that with a combination of brute force arrogance and display of 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 of, of criminality they forcefully take people's land we've seen thousands of cases thousands of cases where people's property have been forcefully taken away from them. You know, but they come out in all, all, all sorts of uh, different uh, names and then they, 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 they go ahead and start perpetrating this criminality, stealing people's land, stealing people's property. You know, in some communities, they will tell you that if you buy a property in some communities that you, you have only... Um, uh, three years or two years to develop it and after two years they take that property that is wrong that is wrong there is there is no time frame there is no time frame for developing properties in law there's no time frame you have no time frame to develop a property that you bought nobody can tell you that if you buy a land if you don't develop it that after uh, after three years or two years that that land now be belongs to the community that's not correct that's not correct if the community wants to sell land, let them sell land to people. If they don't want to sell land, let them keep their lands. You cannot sell land to somebody and force the person, force the person to develop the land. So people will develop the, their, their properties based on 
how their finances improve or what uh, capacity they have to develop that property. It shouldn't be a, a, a force. You know, it shouldn't be like a do or die. Like if you don't if you don't develop the property, then the property is now is now uh, you, you have you forfeit the property. You know, nowhere that is done. Nowhere, nowhere. You know, so ever since government has just kept quiet and allowed this banditry. You know, this banditry to continue in the name of of um, uh, CDA and all of it. And I'm happy that the governor and the government have come out with a strong voice. Now they have to follow up. They have to follow up this law by implementing it strictly, strict implementation. Or else these same people will come out tomorrow with another name or something else and they will continue this criminality that, that they have been perpetrating on people. Go to so many communities, they take, they take people's land. They will sell one land for five people, six people, and then create confusion. And then, you know, nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's just like elections in Nigeria because we have no strong laws against fraud. So people just do do things and get away with it, you know. So, and and also, I let me also speak to um, speak to those who buy properties in Edo. I mean, Edo State is a very good place to invest in properties. It's a very good place. Let let's not confuse that at all. The the rates at which um, a property uh, increase, the value of property increase in Edo State is very commendable. It's very good, you know, and. And do not be um, discouraged because the government, as we can see, they are doing enough right now to make sure that this sector is completely sanitized. But then, on your own, you also have to do things to guard your property. For example, when you buy a land, don't, don't leave it bare. You know, if you can't afford to do proper documentation on it, do proper doc documentation on it. Do proper documentation on it. Certificate of occupancy are very good ways to uh, uh, secure properties. C certificate of occupancies are very good ways. So a lot of people still don't understand different ways that you can secure your properties. You know, most times they will just buy property. I've seen people who bought properties in a do and they they were just uh, had a verbal agreement. Oh, it's my friend. My friend in London sold the land to me, so we just he just told me, you know, like I just sent him the money and just and there was no proper, there was no proper documentation. I've also seen people who gave properties to their relatives, my like, like maybe somebody bought a big land and is giving to brothers and sisters and friends, and there will be no documentation at all. All they just do is oh okay, now my brother go cut hundred by hundred for him. Oh now my sister go cut fifty by hundred for him, and there's no proper documentation binding on those uh, um, transactions or, or whatever you call it. There should have been, in those cases, there is what we call a deed of gift. Deed of gift. So, later on, when you don't have issues, maybe committee people not come and try to take these properties back, they have no proper uh, history and no proper documentation to prove that those properties are their own. Giving room to these people who will look for any small excuse to confiscate and steal people's land, you know, and we've seen it in all communities, in everywhere. It's, it's rampant. It's as it's all, I don't want to mention names, but it's it's so it's so uh, um, terrible this period, you know, and that a lot of people have been complaining. People have been complaining, particularly those in the diaspora and those here. People have been calling. Have been complaining, you know. I I I I do a lot of property deals. I do a lot of uh, uh, certificate of occupancy for people, and in all of it, I've seen that there are so many issues because so many people here who bought properties they have problems with with communities, with people, with people who just come out tomorrow and say, "Before you develop your property, you have to settle them, you have to pay for crops, and all of all of that." Those are just excuses to get uh, money from people. Somebody will come and tell you that his father farmed in a proper in a land 50 years ago. And when you bought that land, it was bush, thick forest. 
You have to even clear it. You have to even pay money to remove the trees. And when you just start, start to develop, one man will come, one guy will come in the name of uh, uh, Okaigele or community development something, and we tell you that that particular property that his father, his grandfather, farm in that place. That for that reason, you have to go and bring one hundred fifty thousand before you start farming. It's, it, and you ask them what it is for, they will say crops. Whoa, you know all that right now is has been proscribed under this new law as and a criminal act criminal act so when next you want to go to your property to work and somebody comes and says you have to pay this you have to pay that you have to do this or that it is now illegal completely illegal in a door to solicit or give money to criminals criminal gangs if you buy a land go through the normal process go through the normal process of doing the right thing even what they call uh, uh, imolu or imolu in many um, in many communities it is not by force it is not by force but what we've seen recently is that because these guys have become so desperate to collect money from prospective developers what they do is that they impose it on people that you are coming to build a, a build a, a build a house somewhere that you must pay for Imolu. Imolu before used to be like a friendly gesture. You come to a new area, you want to build your house. The community people will come and assist you. Those that are building, they will come and help you. Then you will not cook for them. You you buy the the hand of an antelope, the arm of an antelope, and use your cook or bowl of soup and make panadian for them. Now it has been monetized. They now monetize it. You go to community and they tell you to go and bring 250000 for a molu. Then you now start negotiating, negotiating. They eventually, they now say to go and bring 150000 for something which is not backed by law. It is not backed by law. And then what we've seen is that these things have continued to happen and happen and happen and happen and happen. And these perpetrators of these acts, they become more and more daring. More and more daring in how they go about the extortion of of people who have come to bring their own money to develop their own communities or develop communities in 20 in 2018 or 2017 there about the remittance the remittance from the diaspora to nigeria was over 20 billion dollars of remittance to Nigeria, which means money that people send back home to do things for them, to do businesses, to develop properties and all of that. $20 billion. And we know the amount of people, their dose, we their dose, we know the, the, the volume of people we have in the diaspora, from Europe to America to Australia to everywhere. We know the people. So even if we said of that chunk of money, even if we said that just 10% or 5% came to uh, do that's that's almost uh, that's almost uh, if we say ten percent came to a do that's almost uh, uh, two hundred million dollars that people repatriated home. That is all the development you see in communities today. That is all the four flats you see. That's the beautiful houses you see in every communities. Many of these properties have been developed by people who are in the diaspora, and it is only normal for the government to do the proper things to protect these people, protect their investment, protect this because these are, these are sweat of people. I lived in the diaspora before for many years. I lived in Europe for, for so many years also. And I know how it is to make money. I know how it is. Some people will work odd jobs. People work in the snow, work in the, in the, in the, in the you know, they don't, they barely have, have time to sleep. And then they bring this money home to try to use to develop a property and one person will come out and say he's a kaigele and we steal that land. We steal it. It is very, very painful. It is very, very painful. You know? So, I commend Governor Basaki for this. This is a bold step. I commend the House of Assembly for this. This is perfect. What we need to do now is all support the government to make sure that this law is fully adhered to. Don't compromise it. Don't compromise it. If anybody is asking you to pay money in any community for anything, report the person. Don't pay. 
If we all stop to patronize this rubbish, it will stop. It will stop. If we all, if we all stop patronizing the rubbish, it will stop. So when they ask you to bring money, don't bring money. When you buy a land, don't say because you bought the land from God. What I see so many people do is that they will say, oh, I bought this land from the chairman direct. There is nothing like chairman in property administration law in Nigeria. Nothing like chairman. Nothing. In the property administration law of Nigeria, nothing like chairman. Nothing. So they will tell you, oh, I bought this land directly from the chairman, so I'm not afraid that anything will happen. Will the chairman be alive forever? What happens if the chairman, something happens to the chairman or the chairman travels or something? So take bold steps to protect your property. Take it. It is only in Nigeria that things just happen and we just overlook it as if it's nothing. In America, you cannot even enter somebody's land. You can't. Once a property is private, it's private. In America, yes. When a property is private, it's private. You cannot enter. If you enter, you get anything you see in that property, you bear it. I've seen videos where trespassers are, sh are shot in America. They are shot for entering other people's property. Shot without warning. So, you cannot buy land. I had, I had, I had a situation recently where a, a, a friend of mine bought a, a property. He has acquired this property. He's bought it for like close to like eight years now. He built on it, started the process of building on it. They said they wanted a development levy. They charged, he paid 400,000 naira for the development levy. Then they built, started building property. They got to the roofing stage. And that set of people came. They said they were a committee for, 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 um, uh, for roof. They paid 50,000. He completed the house. And that set came again. They said they were a committee for lights. He paid, uh, 80,000. And that set came again. They said they were a committee for road. He paid 20,000. And then after all of this, another set came again and said that uh, uh, they want to inquire how he got that land. That the land that he is acquiring, which is 100 by 200, that because they saw that a 100 by 100 was vacant close to him, they said they wanted to know how he got 100 by 100 by 2. That somebody else owned the 100 by 100 close to him. These are the same set of people who have been coming since, collecting money, collecting all sorts of uh, illegal revenues. They are not state government. They are not local government. They are not backed by law. No law. There is no law in, in those cities that backs their, their oppression. They come and they collect this money. You are not a local government. Today you want to install signboard, they will come and tell you, oh, you have to pay 70,000 to install signboard. Oh, the same local government officials will go to the same place and ask the people to pay. The community people will come and tell you that before you put that signboard there, you also pay. Whereas, by law, it is only the local government that is in charge of street naming. It's the local government. But what we see in the communities today is that people have now set up like a quasi-government in communities. They operate like a government. But just like a criminal gang. But they operate like a government. They come and tell you before you buy a land. After buying the land, somebody will come and tell you that, they've, that you have to pay for measurements. You buy a land from Mr. A. A land that he has owned for, for 15 years. He has a 100 by 100 in so so, -so street. In the already built area where they already houses, everywhere is filled with houses. You buy the land from him, you pay him. Then the moment you are molding block, somebody will come and tell you that uh, you have to come and pay for measurements that they've not measure the land for you. That you cannot just start work without, without measuring. The person that sold land for you have already shown you where he sold to you. Then this will come out in the name of community and tell you that they have to uh, you have to pay for measurement. Then they will charge you and you pay for measurements. And you pay for measurement. And then you are forced to pay 20000 or 30000 depending on your negotiating skills for uh, measurement. All these things are wrong. Completely wrong. 
completely wrong. And this is what the Edo State government have tried to stop with this law. This is what Edo State government have tried to stop with this law. And this is what, this is the aim. The aim is to stop this criminality that is going on. So that people will have the, the confidence to bring their money and invest in property in Edo State. I've seen a lot of people take their money, go to Lagos and buy properties in Lagos. How did Lagos become Lagos today in, in terms of properties? It's because people put money into it. People put money into it and they get returns. That's why a lot of people go to Lagos and say, I want to go and buy property in Lagos. I want to go and develop property in Lagos because they put money and they get returns. And we all saw the way the Omole or, or, or Monile or what they call them in Lagos were dealt with by the former government. They knew, knew that they had to sanitize it. And they went straight up and, di and, and did what they had to do. And that was what the, the state governor here, his excellency, Governor Godin Obasaki, has tried to replicate. But what we've seen is that people have found loopholes to continue to operate. When CDA was banned, we were all happy, everybody was happy. And then suddenly, you know, they came out through the back door with Okai Rele. And now, every form of Okai Rele or whatever they call it, every form of extortion has been banned. And there's a criminal, there's a criminal, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a criminal offense. Which means, if anybody walked into your land that is not acting on, on the orders of a state government, to come and solicit money from you. The person is not a staff of the Edo State uh, 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 Land, uh, um, uh, Edo State uh, Edo GIS, or it's not a staff of uh, of uh, the Ministry of Lands and Survey and all of it, or any other agency in Edo State that have the powers, then that person should be reported to the state government. The state government have opened lines and they have opened, um, um, they are reforming the, 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 a new agency that will be in charge of prosecuting these people. Because people have to go to prison. People have to go to prison so that they will learn. One man cannot be inside the snow, suffering in Europe to get money. Suffering, traveling from place to place, working his life out to be able to develop a land in, 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 in his village. And another person will sit down at home, extorting that person. Extorting the person. It's wrong. It's wrong. In most places, you will buy land, 100 by 100. Or you buy a big land. I've seen this particular case. A friend of mine bought a land in 2014. A huge expanse of land. And the the the... The reason why he bought that land was to keep the land so that once the land's the value appreciate, they can resell. It's a business. It's a business, pure business. And that's why they bring out their money. A lot of people borrow money to even buy this land. He bought the land. He was asked to pay for development fees and all of that, which he paid. He paid. Back then, they still had this street uh, CDA operation. He paid uh, development levy. At the end, he bought the land 500,000 per plot, and he bought about 16 plots. Then, luckily, one time, there was, I think the state government or so, began to construct the road, construct the road to the area. And then, a land that was bought in 2014 for 500,000 started selling for 5 million in the same area, 6 million. And then, the community people came out. They approached the land, they brought bulldozer and they divided the land into two. And then when the guy was asking, they said, uh, well, when you bought this land, you bought the whole land for 10 million then. Now only two plots is 10 million. So what do you want to do? You want to take five plots? These are the issues that the governor wants to stop. These, those are criminal issues. How a land appreciate is none, is none of the community's business. If the community wants... If they don't want to sell their land, let them keep their land. Let them keep their land. Go to some communities today, they've sold all the land. Even land that they that meant for public parks, schools, markets, they have been sold. 
They have you sold. You live in Europe. You live in America. You can stay in your house. If it's too hot, you walk down from your house, walk into a public park. Every area have a public park, a public space. You go out of your house, you sit down, your kids can run in the public park, you can play, have fun, smoke your cigar, and go back in, into your house. But what we, are we seeing here? All we see here is just only road. Even in some communities, they sell roads now. They will block the road and sell it. You enter from one side, you say it's a close. You enter from the other side, it's a close. They sell one side. They sell one side. These are people who have no idea about town planning. No idea. How many communities have you gone to? You see that, oh, in every five, six streets, they left a public, a land just for public park where people can come out, sit down, relax, have conversations, children can play around. How many communities have you seen that they left land for recreation centers, for football, where people can go and play? How many communities? All they just do is just look at the land. Oh, people are trying to have interest in land. Say that. They just bring out. Oh, yeah, every 200 pull road, every 200 pull road, every 200 pull road, every 200 pull road. And then they will create confusion everywhere. Confusion. You look at the city, the city is so disorganized. Disorganized. You go to some other cities, you go to Calabar, you go to Akwa Ibom, you go to Uyo, you see how the cities have been planned out. Planned out. You go, you, you go, you see public parks. You see public playgrounds. You see public football field. Here, what you see, the only way you see public uh, playground is inside primary schools. And those were the old Benin, old Benin. The new areas now where they have primary, the new areas where they have primary school, where community left land for government to build primary school for them. They didn't even leave land that is enough to even build half of a football field. So what you have is communities where children don't even have uh, uh, areas where they can play. And you know what it is when you say um, all work and no play make Jack, Jack a dog boy. That's correct. That's correct. Children cannot play. There's no allocation for markets. There's no allocation for markets. Sometimes people close in this Ubo, Ubo road before you pass the, the only one market in that place in the evening. You spend sometimes 30 minutes to one hour on the place. All the roads are congested. People have littered the whole roads with caravans. You can't even pass. You close from your office to drive home. Your house is maybe 20 minutes drive. You spend one hour because the whole areas are congested. In a community where you where you have 10 roads, they will make available only two roads. If out of the two roads, one will be a close. They will open one side and set the other side. And you drive in and you see that one side is one side is closed, the other side is open. All in the name of their developing communities. Communities were never developed. They weren't developed. These guys do not understand the meaning of community development. They don't. They don't. They don't. I mean, I have nothing personal against anybody. I have um, have respect for them as, as, as people who are trying to survive. But there are other, there are other ways. Let government come in and develop these communities and plant them. We can't continue like this. If we continue like this, have you thought, have you think about how our communities will look in the next 20 years without planning? In the, in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 60s, in the 60s, Benin was planned out. They planned Benin the old Benin was planned. They had allocation for where there would be a stadium, where there would be this, where there would be that, where there would be this road, there would be that road. You could see from, from Ring Road, Obakaraye, all those areas, Akpapava, New Lagos Road, New Benin, Aziz. You see, all those roads were planned out. Planned out. Planned out. What we see today now is just some gangs coming out. 
One man who did not even go to primary school will tell you he's the Soviet general of the community. He doesn't even know how to operate survey equipment. He will tell you he's the Soviet general. Another one that doesn't even know anything about record keeping will tell you he's the pointer. So they'll just sit down and just call village people, village youth. You, you are pointer. You, you are Soviet. You, you are this. You, you are financial. You are, you are that. And then these guys will go out and create chaos in the community. Chaos. 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 I remember there was a time I, 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 I raised this issue with the governor. And he said that, because I, I, when I brought that issue to him, I had a conversation, one-on-one -on -one conversation with the governor. And then we were discussing something about flooding in Benin. That, this was like last year. We were discussing flooding. I said, Your Excellency, you know, something urgently has to be done to address issues of flooding and the effect. Is it how we plan our city? Is it what we do? Is it how our people behave that is causing this flooding problem? And he said he was working on something. He was working on a law. And that law will even uh, compel property owners to clean their, their drainages in front of them. I was happy to hear that. Because we act so irresponsible here. People act as if they are government of their own, like government does not exist. We saw it. It's so rife in Benin. So rife. People will go to, before, before them, people will go to a bar market and say, oh, they have power to collect money. And then one man will just go around be collecting money, slapping women. Slapping old women on their head to collect money from them. We have lost our sense of decency as a people in the way we behave. We have lost our conscience. We don't act with conscience. These people that are developing properties here, many of them that are, they live abroad. If I tell you the suffer, some of them suffer to raise money. You think they just pick money from the ground? They suffer, they suffer to raise money. It's not easy. It's not easy. So because somebody is living in Holland or is living in Germany or is living in France or is living in America and developing people, it does not mean that that person is picking that money from the ground there. Some of them are working three jobs, four jobs. Two jobs. They inside that two jobs, they are massively in debt. They are paying their school fees. They are supporting their family members. And they are still trying to develop a property that they can return back to. Because a lot of people who are living in diaspora have this dream to one day return to Nigeria and live in Nigeria. And if Nigeria was better, I'm sure a lot of them would have returned already. I'm telling you. There are so many people in the diaspora who would have returned if this country was working. And the reason why this country is not working is because everybody acts irresponsible. Irresponsible. So when you see that people are developing property, it's not that they have so much money. Sometimes they are developing from salaries. Salaries. I worked in a company back then in Fidenza where we produce glass. And my monthly salary was 700 euro. And of that 700 euro, I will support family members at home. I will, this one will come with this problem. I will support friends, support extended family, pay my own bills from 700 euro, my sister. 700 euros. I will pay bills, pay my own bills. Support friends, support families, save, pay one or two debts that you've owed. And then you still manage to save towards buying a property in Nigeria. And after which, one person will come out and tell you that, uh, well, when you bought that property, it was 500,000. Now the property is 5 million. So which means we will share it all too. Ah? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? So let me not bore you too much. It's been a long video. But I think the governor is on the right track with this law. You know, whether you are APC, you are PDP, you are Abga, it doesn't matter. This is not a law targeting anybody. This is not a law 
that is meant for PDP members or APC members. This is a law that is meant for a do state to repair a fundamental problem in a do state to repair it. Because from a do south to a do central, we've seen all these things. I do not. These issues are gradually trying to creep out. Gradually. I've been to some communities in the do central where those in charge of developing the communities, in charge of providing, uh, uh, creating roads, creating parks, creating everything, are people who live in the village. Many of them, with all due respect to them, do not have the expertise. They don't have the expertise. They are not trained in town planning. They are not trained in town planning. And they just go about, one person will just come and say he's the Ojon Were, he will just appoint one Mr. A, or yeah, you be in charge of a road. Mr. B, you be in charge of signboard. Mr. C, you be in charge of collecting money for people who want to do roof. And they see it like they are empowering their people. But what they are doing is creating confusion. And that is what Governor Pasaki has entered to stop. It takes courage. It's not easy. It's not easy because this is something that is going on everywhere. So for the governor to come out and confront it head on like this, it shows that the governor have the, 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 the courage and have the interest of the Edo people at heart. And we must appreciate him. And we must support him to see that this law is fully established. So that in 20 years time, we can look back at our communities and say, oh, okay, we are happy with what we are seeing. So that those of us or those who are living in the diaspora can say, oh, one day, when they show their friends picture of their communities, they'll be happy to say, oh, look at my community where I come from or look at my area where I come from. They'll be happy to show people, look at my town, look at my village, see how beautiful it is. But when we continue this character, this attitude, this behavior we are allowed to continue, it will ruin our, our cities. It will get to a time where the, the damage would have been done and it will be very hard to repair. Because when you look at the cost of breaking so many people's houses and re replanning the, the town, no government wants to take that risk. So, this is a good one. The governor has done well on this. If you have any issue with your land, please, if anybody is asking you to come and pay development fee, come and pay Okagele fee, come and bring, drink, bring in Molu, or anything they call it, please, make a report to the government. Make a report to the government. Report the person. That person is a criminal. If anybody is telling you to come and pay for crops, or else you meet crops in that land. If you go to a land and you see cassava inside, you see yam inside, you see banga inside, you see those inside, you go and you get an independent um, valuer. So which means the people will come, you will come, an independent valuer that does, does not, that is not interested, that, is, that, that didn't come through you, can come and value the, 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 the crops inside. Let's say I buy a land somewhere. And when I buy the land, I see that there are plantain inside. The person had plantain inside. He has coconut inside. It has pineapple inside. It has cassava inside. What we can do, we can get an independent valuer. We say, okay, this land is 200 by 200. Please value the crops inside. Value the crops inside. And then he will value the crops and then a refund is made to the person that planted those crops. Other than that, if you buy a land and what you meet is at his bush, and one person come and tell you, oh, my, my, my papa fed farm for a year, 30 years ago, my papa fed a farm for this land, now we pay for crops. That person, report the person to the nearest police station. Report the person. The governor has said that he is backing everybody in this if anybody comes to your property and try to solicit money or extort you, take serious actions against the person. Serious actions. No matter who the person may be, 
whether they call the person chairman, whether they call the person this or that, in any community, take serious actions against the person. Don't be afraid. The government is backing everybody on this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. As usual, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for watching this video. And I hope that you have been informed. And I hope that you have been enlightened about some of... Um, I, I will do another video sometime during the week when I lay hands on the, on the, on the law. And I can read it clause by clause out to my, my, my followers on Facebook. And can educate them properly on on the new uh, property law in the two states. You know, I will do that. I promise. I will try and as much as possible to get my hands on that law uh, on the documents sometime before the end of this week. So I'll do another video and while I'll read it, read it out and enlighten uh, everyone if you are there to let you know what and what it entails. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a good night. Now we don't hear from Fares or Pere. Let us know what you think for comment section. If you never subscribe to Dan ARG YouTube, try make you subscribe so that make you for the hear all the things where they happen for a dose state. Make I leave you with this video. Make you help us share them. Thank you for watching Dan ARG YouTube.